All right, we're going to get started right now with news you can use. I'm going to do this thing off camera today because I am sitting in a parking lot uh, facing the wrong way from the ocean. It's just down the street from me here in Monterey Bay, but we're going to get this done. Uh, we're going to do rapid fire Thursday news you can use. So we're going to go through a bunch of topics and just hit them real quick. Number one, tech layoffs. Companies are letting go of workers as recession fears linger. We're going to talk about that in a second. Number two. The recession will be the most severe yet, says Peter Schiff, who called the 2008 financial crisis. And he says this next downturn will be much worse. We're going to hear from uh, a couple of people as to where they want to put, uh, they think you ought to be putting the money, your money during recessions coming up and some of the good safe places to go, including Mitt Romney. Um, and finally, we're going to end up talking about our favorite stupid topic, which is California law and where it's going to affect those of you in some other states down the road. As you guys know, it starts out here on the left coast generally and then works its way back east. Um, we've got a real doozy for you tonight. All right, starting off with tech companies. Uh, a lot of pink slips have been going out lately. There was an article in USA Today uh, two days ago about these giant tech companies here in California up in the Silicon Valley, and this includes that Jeff, you got muted there. Jeff, if you can hear me, you're muted. Oh. I have this thing down to a science. They never beat on the inventory. They know good times, down, you know, good times, bad times, everything in between. And they are really good at managing their inventory. But in both cases, um, they ended up with a huge amount of excess inventory as of today versus what they anticipated. So what that means, and I can tell you that the Fed, the Federal Reserve is keeping their eyes on these guys. Because if anybody knows what the economy is going to do in the next 30, 60, 90 days, it's, it's these folks. Um, and this is the first time both of them have missed by this large number. You're going to see this in the National News, Wall Street Journal, probably USA Today over the next few days, uh, next week, I would suspect. But uh, that's that's a big, big event for them to miss on their inventory thing. It's also going to hammer their stock next week. So if you guys are in those stocks, I'd recommend shorting them. Uh, next item, uh, Peter Schiff, uh, the mo the uh, the. Uh, recession that he is calling. He's the guy that called the 2008 crisis, a financial crisis. He said the next downturn is going to be worse. And his his logic is pretty simple, but I think it's sound. Uh, we've had the longest run of cheap interest that we've ever had. The last 10 or 12 years, it's been artificially kept down by the Fed and they have taken care of business by creating printing money at will. There's no basis for the money anymore. Starting 1974, we took our country off of the gold reserve. And so it is just literally printing funny money. When I grew up, they used to talk about funny money all the time. It's money that has no backing. Well, that's what we've done for the last 10 years. And the basic premise in economics is the longer your interest rates stay down artificially, the longer the recession that will follow to get things back in balance will take. And so that is what is happening now, according to Peter Schiff. He and Mitt Romney have uh, some similarities in what they're predicting to put your money in uh, going forward. Uh, one of the things that, that both on top of their list is agriculture and agricultural property. So both farm ground and farm related stocks, I concur, as you guys know, and disclosure here, I'm a fifth generation California farmer. It's a good business to be in. Um, and it is one of those businesses that is essentially recession proof. When recession hits, people get depressed and they do two things, they eat and drink. And both those require a farmer on the other end of that shovel. So uh, these are good places to park money. Gold is uh, looking good. Uh, there are recession proof income stocks and dividend stocks. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in at length uh, next, next week. Um, next item. And the, the final one is once again uh, brought to you from the land of fruits and nuts out here in California. Uh, this new law that we passed as of the first of the year 
here in California has just been upheld by a Supreme Court in California, State Supreme Court of California. It's unbelievable. I, I wasn't even aware this, this actually got signed and put into law, but uh, the law says that if you evict a tenant in California, and this was as of earlier this year, if you lawfully evict a tenant, even if you win a judgment against them, you must, upon kicking them out, you must give them a month of free rent and a security deposit so they can get their next place. So these guys could be into you for not paying you for six years, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and the judge legally says you can kick them out and get a judgment against them. But going out the door, you got to give them a parting gift of one month's rent plus security deposit for the next place, the next group of landlords they can screw. So only out here in California does this shiz happen. But this is real. Once again, the court system out here has affirmed what our goofy legislature out here has signed into law and uh, along with our emperor of California, Newsom. So it is crazy. Uh, but expect this thing to bleed into other parts of the country, probably New York and Illinois first, and some of the other states. This is making a big difference, uh, you know, between these states that have this kind of goofy stuff and the ones that are turning their back on it. So keep in mind, um, you know, there's lots of good news out there, but there's lots of this crazy stuff that we can't afford to have happen. Anyway, um, and California has also instituted a rent increase uh, across the state. Um, now, a lot of cities in California have a, not a lot, but a handful, have a limit as to how much you can increase your rent, if at all, uh, per year. And a lot of them are going into rent freezes. They're saying you can no longer raise your rent. California passed a state law that went into effect at the beginning of this year, limiting you to a 10% a year uh, increase in the rents that you can, the raising of the rent rental rates that you can charge a tenant. So if you buy a rental property and it's undervalued in California, let's say it's they've been getting $600 because he never wanted to charge the little old lady who's been living there 100 years more, but it's a $2,000 rent, you can only raise that rent $60 a month by law in any place in California now. Um, and it would take you basically until your great grandkids died to get it back up to market rents. So that's another craziness that we're having happen. Nobody's paying attention to that um, because most landlords got ahead of the thing, but you're going to see, you know, rents, uh, the, these fixed rents or what we call, uh, you know, rental freezes happen in other parts of the country as well. New York has them and other states have them. In some cases, Chicago has them, et cetera. But you're gonna see that in some of these other states too. So both of those laws have been upheld uh, by the state, I think it was the state court, the state Supreme Court of California. Once again, California affirming its own homemade laws. Lovely, I can't wait to move. All right, that's it for news you can use today. Uh, I'm sorry to be all bad news, but uh, there is good news. And it is the fact that you guys are all in the most smoking hot business out there right now there is it, you you literally have a printing press to make money um i was talking with one of my housing teams today and i think we put we, we have yet to get them all signed but we've basically got five properties this week this is only thursday uh under contract and these are all decent deals i mean we're now we're starting to throw out deals that only make 20 30 40 thousand in favor of the five fifty thousand to six figure deals out there and so they're out there sellers are desperate and uh they're they're leaving they're running and in a lot of cases uh, this strategy that we've talked to you guys in the past about where you can uh, work out a one-year payment program to get paid to to get your seller paid for the house that you're buying for cash in other words i want a cash price but i'm not going to pay you for 12 months i'll give you a little bit of money on a monthly basis that allows you then as the owner of the house to go in rehab the house and then sell that house without ever having to go out and borrow or write a check borrow money or write a check for the acquisition of the house itself it's a great way to go it reduces your leverage it reduces your exposure it increases your return on investment dramatically so i'd encourage everybody to use that model we've talked about it in previous uh, calls and I would I would strongly encourage you to look at that because what I am seeing in the marketplace is sellers 
are amenable to that. In many cases, uh, they're, they're happy to do that. All right, that's it. News you can use today.